Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at the percentage drawdown from the prior all-time high. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So measuring things from the all-time high is not necessarily the best way to measure your ROI, uh, or the ROI of a particular asset, but it is at least somewhat useful in comparing it to prior market cycles. So for instance, when we can look at drawdowns from the prior all-time high in cycle one, we know that Bitcoin went down about 94% or so from the all-time high in cycle two, it was closer to 87%, in cycle three, it was around 84%. And right now, Bitcoin sits down about 70 to 71% from the all-time high. And so it sort of begs the question, you know, is 17.5K the bottom? Is it not the bottom? There's a lot of people that, that talk about, you know, well, this time is different. The macro looks a lot worse than it has ever before. Therefore, things could get a lot worse. And while there is some merit to that, uh, at least the, the macro isn't as, isn't as good as it has been in the past, especially with inflation still high, we can also just simply look at a chart like this and see that even though the macro remains very bad, we're still looking at, at only being down 70 to 71% from the all-time high. So it sort of begs the question, you know, will Bitcoin get another leg down? And while there are certainly no certainties with, with the price of Bitcoin, we can go back and look to see what happened when we were previously 70% down or so, right? So for instance, in, in 2018, once we made it down to about 70% below the all-time high, we actually spent a few months there. And at one point, we actually had a nice little relief rally that took us all the way back up to only being down 58% from the all-time high. But ultimately, we did see another leg down after, you know, after a few months. And a similar thing could be said about the 2014 bear market as well. We sort of got um, in limbo at about 60 to 70% down from the all-time high. We had one more leg down which ultimately marked the market cycle bottom. Now, another thing we can do with this is we could potentially look at moving averages. And one of the reasons why I looked at, like to look at moving averages here is that even though it's a lagging indicator, it really does show that once the bottom is in, you still likely have a few months of, of accumulating around those levels, not necessarily at the exact bottom, but you know, within, you know, within a, a, a certain tolerance from the bottom. I mean, in, even in 2015, the, the bottom was ultimately below 200 bucks, but you know you still had a long time to buy even Bitcoin just over $200 before we had another bull market. And even in 2018, once the bottom was in, you still had, had several months. And so again, there's a lot of angst in the market of wondering, is the bottom in, is it not? Um, if you look at charts like this, while it is a lagging indicator, you can see that Bitcoin ultimately did go down closer to 80% below the prior all-time high when, when looking at, say, like a 30-day moving average or maybe even slightly worse than that. Um, so that is at least something to consider. Now, one thing that we don't often talk about is measuring Bitcoin against other assets besides the U.S. dollar, okay? And the reason why that's useful is because even though a lot of people might think the U.S. dollar is this absolute thing, the value of the U.S. dollar actually changes, right? The strength of the U.S. dollar changes, and you can track that with the U.S. dollar currency index, DXY. But... What we can do is we can look at the performance of Bitcoin as measured, say, against the S&P 500 and say, you know what, as measured by the S&P, Bitcoin has also seen corrections to the tune of 83% or so. Last cycle, we can see it went down about 83% against the S&P before it finally bottomed. Right now, it's down about 67% against the S&P. Now, one thing to consider is that Bitcoin's valuation against the U.S. dollar does not necessarily have to go down for the s p for the bitcoin s p percentage drawdown from the all-time high to continue dropping if the s p were to go back up and bitcoin were to stay constant then the valuation of bitcoin um, divided by the s p would in fact uh, go down so that is at least something to consider but you can also see that there was you know a phase where we spent a little bit of time sort of chopping at around this level before finally seeing that that final leg down um, and, and putting in a market cycle bottom and then another thing I thought was interesting would be to compare this against things like gold, because, you know, gold has been relatively stagnant in terms of price over the last several months. It's mostly just been between $1,800 to $2,000. But what's interesting is when you measure Bitcoin against the U.S. dollar, its percentage drawdown has varied some. Against gold, it actually was about the same from both cycles or the last two cycles or so. You can see the drawdown from the all time high occurred at around 81 to 82 percent below the all time high as measured against gold. And right now, Bitcoin is about 70 to 71 percent down from the all time high 
as measured against gold. And so it would be interesting if we saw something similar play out. I mean, if if, if either Bitcoin's valuation against the US dollar were to go down and gold stayed constant. So if, if Bitcoin went down and gold stayed constant, you could see Bitcoin's gold valuation going down. Or if gold went up and Bitcoin stayed constant, then you could see the same thing. But again, you can see that in both cycles that just came before us, not the, the cycle before that one, Bitcoin's valuation against gold bottomed closer to 81 to 82% down from the all-time high. And right now it sits closer to about 70 to 71% down from the all-time high. Remember, these bear markets can take a while to play out. I, I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people would prefer a V-shaped recovery, but usually Bitcoin bear markets don't give you V-shaped recoveries. They give you rounded bottoms, um, where it, it sort of takes a while for, for the market to, to really absorb all that selling pressure from people who bought at the all-time high and then for the new buyers to sort of, you know, give way to another um, bull market. So I'll be on the lookout for something like that. I, I also think measuring things from the all-time high, as I said before, isn't necessarily the best way to measure it because your, your sort of your reference point is this like manic, irrational phase that, that's hard to you know, it, it doesn't necessarily make any rational sense why you would measure it from there. However, there are some interesting patterns that that could emerge when comparing one cycle to another. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to this chart. And again, you can toggle between all sorts of pairs, crypto, stocks, and metals. You can look at moving averages and so on and so forth. So check it out. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. See you guys next time. Bye.